In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we reflect upon the Lord's word to us today. Our first reading for this morning is from 2 Kings chapter 2. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from over you? And he said, yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please. Let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, you have asked a hard thing. 
Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, bring an offering, and come into his courts. Our second reading is from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, the third and the fourth chapters. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel for this Sunday of the Transfiguration. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses And they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dearly beloved in the Lord, 
Let us continue, especially in these dark times, to love one another, that united as one people we might confess together our common Christian faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. So yes, indeed, this is the Feast of the Transfiguration. But it would be pretty difficult for any of us who've spent time in Dalarama or Walmart in the last few days to also point out that today is St. Valentine's Day. Now, St. Valentine, we don't know an awful lot about, but by what we do know, was a pastor. In fact, a bishop in the ancient church became famous because while he was in prison, he kept up the spirits of his people by writing them notes. They weren't able to get together, as we are not often able to get together as the fullness of our congregation, and yet Valentine found a way to keep people's spirits up by reminding them of the love that Christ has for them in all circumstances. And so here we are, 18, 1700 years after Valentine, celebrating this day that is marked as a celebration of love. Celebration of remembrance, cards, heart shaped candy boxes, etc., etc., etc. And as I was thinking about today and the transfiguration of our Lord, the end of the Epiphany season, the beginning of Lent, and yes, St. Valentine's Day, I was thinking of this conference where I met my dear wife way back when in Cincinnati. And the theme of that conference, which was all about the five love languages. I don't know if any of you have read Gary Chapman's books, but I highly recommend it because he talks about the five different ways that people love one another. Some people mostly appreciate gifts. My mom's love language is gift giving. And if she really wants us to know that She loves us. She sends us a present. Physical touch, which has been incredibly difficult during this pandemic time for people whose love language is a hug or a pat on the back or even a handshake, and we've had all those things taken away from us. Quality time. Some people just want to express their love by being with the people that they love. For others, it's acts of service, and for still others, words of affirmation. You did a great job. You really put your all into it. Thank you so much for spending the time to think about me. But one thing that I have discovered as a pastor now more than 17 years and as a human being for almost 49 years is a universal love language that is true of almost everyone, no matter which of those five is the one that predominates. And that is listening listening to people. Not hearing, because we hear people all the time and we're heard by people all the time, but to actually have someone listen to what you have to say 
reflect back your words to you with more than just a grunt or an uh uh-huh, uh-huh, hey, I've got to go. That is something that everybody appreciates as an act of love. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, for he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. They were terrified because this is the presence of God in a way they had not yet seen. Certainly, being on a mountain with the great heroes of your faith, Moses and Elijah, would have been a big deal, but to see that this teacher that you traveled around with was certainly more than meets the eye. To see him glowing like the sun really, literally, put the fear of God into them. They were so scared that all that they could think of doing was doing. we got to do something. Let's make tents. Now, this is a very religious attitude because one of the chief festivals of the Old Testament people was the Festival of Tents where people would go out and make tents to live out in the wilderness with their God. So it's not like this is a totally unexpected thing that they might suggest to do. And that's our reaction when we see someone that we want to honor too, right? We want to do something. Gift-giving is a natural love language. It's why we give gifts at Christmas and at Easter and Mother's Day, and Father's Day, and of course, even St. Valentine's Day. We want to do something for the people that we love. We want to give them something. And not everyone is gift-giving as their love language. For some, it's physical touch, or some, it's active services. But sometimes, we are so focused on doing something that we don't stop to think about the thing we ought to do. And that's where the disciples got in trouble, right? They were so busy wanting to do something that they never really thought about the thing they ought to do. And thus, the voice speaks from the cloud and says, This is my son, my beloved son, the one whom I love. Listen to him. Listen to him. That's the love language that Peter and James and John are being called to display towards Jesus. You don't need to make tents. You don't need to set up booths. You don't need to build a monument for the Lord here on this mountain. If you love this teacher, if you love this man who is the son of the Father sent into the world for you, then Listen to him. Don't just hear him, but listen. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, the same Moses that was there on top of the mountain with Jesus heard the cry of the people that they never wanted to see God show up like he did on top of Mount Sinai ever again. Too much thunder, too much lightning, too much shock and awe. And Moses said, it is good that you don't want God to show up in this way anymore. And so the Lord your God, Moses said, will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall build temples, set up booths, construct an altar, give gifts to? No. It is to him you shall listen. And so, we see how the disciples have such a hard time of this. Everything that Jesus said encountered opposition, encountered even opposition amongst the disciples. A rich young man comes to Jesus and says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, keep the commandments, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. But he was unable to listen to what Jesus had to say, and so he went away. Peter and James and John, despite all of this talk from Jesus about being a servant, that he had been sent into the world to offer his life as a ransom for many, still come to him and say, 
Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? What do we need to do to show God that we are ready to sit next to you on thrones and rule over Israel? And Jesus takes a little boy, a little child, and says, become like this little child and welcome him in my name. The disciples weren't listening. Three times in each of the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus says the Son of Man will be crucified and after three days rise again. That seems pretty straightforward, and yet the disciples aren't listening because they don't understand what he's saying, the gospel writers write down, and they were afraid to ask. True listening requires asking. And if the disciples wanted to show that they loved their Lord, they should have simply come and said, teach us about this dying and rising, and we will listen. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The last words of Jesus to his disciples on the night in which he is betrayed. When we don't listen to Jesus, we can't say we love him. It's that simple. And the worst thing about that is when we don't listen to Jesus, we do not let him love us. Because the way Jesus loves us is by speaking to us and giving us the gift of his word, his promises, his good news, his announcement of what he has done for each and every one of you to deliver you from sin, to give you the promise of eternal life, to promise you a place in his kingdom. When we don't listen to Jesus, we miss out on those gifts. And we go through life anxious and worried and burdened by guilt. Jesus gives us the gift of his own body and blood on the night in which he was betrayed, when he should have been thinking about all sorts of other things like, What was going to happen in the next hours ahead? I know each and every one of us would be if we knew we were about to be executed in a horribly painful way in the next few hours. But Jesus spends his last time with his disciples speaking to them a word of promise. This is my body, which is for you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. My very first congregation, I had to deal with the fact that we had all sorts of members who never came to worship. And I could have reminded them of the third commandment. Honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. I could have pointed out verses in the epistles that give the consequences to people if they don't come to worship. But I landed on these words of Jesus. Do this in remembrance of me. Oh, if only Jesus had told us what to do that we might keep him in our hearts. If only Jesus had given some indication of the thing that he wanted us to participate in to keep him close to us. Well, wait a minute. He did. Do this. If only we would listen. Then we receive God's gift and we let God speak his love language to us. We let him absolve us of our sins. We let him call us by name in the baptismal font. We let him feed us with his body and blood from the altar. He speaks to us and loves us through his words. Mennonite professor and pastor David Augsburger once said this, Being heard is so close to being loved that they are almost indistinguishable. Being heard is so close to being loved that they are almost indistinguishable. How does one love the Lord our God? By listening to him. And when we listen, we hear God's love showered on us. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in your hearts 
to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Listen to him, and you will find in his words his love. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't have too much in the way of announcements, except first of all, um, prayer requests. Our sister Catherine Kolar is still in hospital. Um, she is being treated for a blood clot in her leg. Uh, went in quite suddenly. As we all know, we're all a little bit nervous about going to hospital these days, but I'm glad that she did go, and she's getting treatment for that, some blood thinners. Um, our brother Massey is still recovering um, from his surgery. Um, we have our sister Olive, who is at the Mount Sinai Rehab Center um, in uh, Cote St. Luc. So she is uh, going through some um, rehab there and determination of where she's going to be going next. Um, and then Carrie Neal uh, and Saint-Jean is still uh, recovering from COVID. Uh, so we keep her in our prayers as well. Um, we are going to be back to our regularly scheduled every second and fourth Sundays having communion here. We are still in code red, which means only 10 people at a time. I would like to ask all of you who are gathered here today, how many of you, Lord willing, snow willing, will be back for communion in two weeks? Can you put up your hands? All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Gulam, you're not sure? You would be back in two weeks for service here? Okay, yes. So here is what I would plan to do because we only have, I think, four or five at each of the other two services. Um, I'm going to try and get in touch with all of you. Hopefully, Emily and I have your contact information just to confirm you will all be here and I will maybe only do two services in two weeks. I think we can get through everyone for two services. Um, next Sunday, we'll be online and we are going to have um, a really joint service with our brothers and sisters in the Cayman Islands. Um, they are very close to getting their new pastor. He'll be arriving, Lord willing, in three weeks, but they are going to set up um, their parsonage in the Caymans to simultaneously broadcast our service, and they're trying to encourage as many of their members as they can to come together at the parsonage to worship um, and join us. So I'm hoping as many of you as possible can join us online so that we can continue to give them that encouragement that Valentine gave to his people through letters, which isn't the same as worship, um, but yet kept their spirits up through the word. Any other announcements? My one last reminder, because it's been two months since we've done the Lord's Supper, one household at a time for each side. So, um, family would be on one side, and then Avery and Emily could be here, and then Philip, and then Lango, and then Gulan, and Bakshiram Paul, and then Angelo, and Michael. No, Andrew. See, it's been two months. I've got to get back in the, back in the routine. Um, having said all of that, let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer and prepare to receive the Lord's Supper. I invite you, if able, to rise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the baptized, that we would heed our Heavenly Father's admonition to listen to his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, as he speaks to us through his holy word and sacraments, and that we would, by grace through faith, behold him in his glory as he continues to tabernacle among us delivering forgiveness, life, and salvation through the same. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are called and ordained to serve in Christ's stead and by his command, that all their preaching and teaching would flow from the right understanding that all Holy Scripture testifies of Christ and all that he has done and continues to do for our eternal salvation. And for those pastors who have strayed from the true gospel and faith, that by the power of the Spirit working through the Word, they might be restored. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For parents in every Christian home, that they would pass on the faith to their children by word and deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who have been placed in authority over us, 
that they would serve with integrity and honor, having the welfare of all in mind. And for our country, especially as we seek a new governor general, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Lord's flock here at Ascension Lutheran Church, that we would be granted faithfulness, humility, and patience in our various vocations, striving to love God and neighbor in all that we say and do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who are sick, hospitalized, recovering, enduring ongoing treatment or suffering in any way, we pray especially this morning for Carrie, Olive, Catherine, Massey, Kyla, and for all those whom we name in our hearts before you. We pray, too, for all of those who are suffering from, recovering from COVID, and all of our healthcare workers as they treat them, that they would know your peace and receive healing and relief according to your gracious will. We pray for those who mourn, that they would be comforted by the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who come to the holy altar this day, to the holy communion of Christ's true body and blood, that receiving the forgiveness of sins, they would be strengthened in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who at his transfiguration revealed his glory to his disciples that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection. And with all the faithful, look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, and pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Happy are they who are called to this supper.
because we have too many to be taken into. This true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in the peace of Christ. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in the peace of the Lord. I look forward to seeing you next Sunday online or even this Wednesday for Ash Wednesday, or we will be back for the Lord's Supper in two weeks on the 28th of February. And I will see you at 11 o'clock.